Hi, I'm Willie and welcome to my channel. This is the first video of many on PFSense. This is just one of the other firewall brands that we are going to be dealing with and PFSense is actually a, a distro or they do sell hardware appliances you can buy now. So if you want to follow along, I'm going to show you how we're going to set up our lab. That's what this first video is all about. We're going to set the lab up and it will prepare us for videos in the future. So the first thing that you're going to need is you're going to need PFSense. And I'm going to put the links to everything that we're using down there in, in the description. So the website is https colon slash slash pfsense.org. You're going to cruise over here. You're going to go to the download. And it is going to ask you what you want to download. So you can we're going to do an, uh, an install. And we're going to do an AMD 64. And then it's going to ask us, do we want the embedded, the USB mem stick, or the ISO CD image? And we're going to select the ISO, the CD image. And then it's going to ask us what mirror we want to download it from. Um, we're going to go ahead and choose New York City and go to download. And so you can see this is 297 megabytes. It's got about 21 seconds left. The next component to this that we're going to need is Oracle uh, VirtualBox, and the website for that is https colon slash slash www.virtualbox.org. Once again, I will put that link in the description. And as of the recording of this video, we are on version 5.1, so we will begin the download on that. Uh, I am on Windows 10. If you're on OS X or Linux or Solaris, you would choose your your flavor there. I'm going to go to Windows and that download is 118 megabytes and it's got about 25 seconds left. Now let's talk about the computer that I'm using. You don't need an like a server grade machine to do this to follow along with these labs. A semi-decent machine will allow you to get your hands on this and we're gonna build the lab out a couple ways. First we're gonna have a virtualized PF Sense box and it's going to have a bridged adapter to our wired network, which will actually run over the same wire as the one that's physically plugged into this computer. And then we're going to have an internal NIC that will then connect to another VM that we are going to spin up and use. So the specs for the PC that I'm, re I'm actually recording this and I'm going to be running these VMs. It's an Asus all-in-one touchscreen. So when you see the videos where everybody's like, you need to get a stylus or your handwriting sucks or whatever, it's actually me touching the screen. Um, but it's a, it's an Intel Core i3 with 8 gigs of RAM and 64-bit Windows. It's got a 1, one terabyte hard drive. So it's not an overly powerful machine. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to do this, you know, hands down. Um, you, you won't have any problems if, if you have this machine and you're going to see that. So what we're going to do is we'll spin up the, the PFSense uh, in this video. And then, and we'll, well, actually what we'll do real quick is we'll go out to um, Ubuntu. And we will also grab the live CD for the latest version of Ubuntu because that's the operating system that we're going to use. So we'll go over to https colon slash slash www.ubuntu.com. Also, you'll notice that every site that I've gone to has the green padlock in Chrome. Everybody is forcing HTTPS, and that is awesome. If you frequent a website and they are not forcing HTTPS yet, contact them. Find out why they are not forcing a secure connection. All right, so we're on ubuntu.com. We're going to go to download and then desktop. And as of the recording of this video, the latest desktop version um, is 16.04.1 LTS. That, that may not be the actual latest, like the Bleeding Edge or even like the October release, but this is the, the LTS, the long-term support release. So that's the one that we're going to grab. They're going to ask if you uh, want to donate, if you want to support feel free to do that. Uh, I have donated in the past, so this time I am just going to go to the download. 
And any open source project that asks for donate for donations, if you can, if they're legitimate and you can donate something, time, uh, effort, money, whatever, a lot of those projects really appreciate that and they need it, and that's you know kind of helps keep that project growing. And and especially if it's something that you use all the time, it's a it's a fantastic cause. So you can see we've got all of our our downloads going. At VirtualBox and PFSense are actually done. So that's fantastic. So the first thing we'll do is we are going to go ahead and launch the VirtualBox install. So we'll go ahead and click on that. And we get the welcome to the Oracle VM VirtualBox virtual 5.1.12 setup wizard. We'll go to next. We're just going to leave the default options here and click next. It's going to ask us, do we want to associate certain files with the program? Do we want to create a shortcut in the quick launch? Do we want to create a shortcut on the desktop? Create start menu entries? Yes, we're going to let it do all that. And then it also tells you, you know, there's a warning. It's going to install some, some uh, networking components, and it will temporarily disconnect you from your network. So if you're doing something mission critical with this machine, now is a good time to, to pause and say, okay, I can do this part later. I'm going to go ahead and proceed. It may it may cancel my download, but we'll restart that. It's going to come up and ask if it's a, okay to install the uh, hardware that is coming with this, and we're going to tell it to go ahead and install. And the setup wizard is complete and do we want to start Oracle VirtualBox after installation? We'll go ahead and keep that checked and we'll start VirtualBox. Just noticed that um, VirtualBox had actually opened up behind the, the window so I was like waiting and I'm like, you know, I'm like, what is going on? And then it was there. If I haven't told you this, by the way, PFSense, if I didn't tell you this in the beginning of the video, is super popular. Uh, and in fact, on their the front of their uh, website, they tell you that it's uh, rapidly becoming the world's most popular open source network security solution. I don't think I can argue with that statement. Um, in later series, we are going to look at like ViOS. We're going to look at Extreme OS. We're going to look at uh, Indian Firewall. We're going to look at uh, some people wanted us to look at Sofa, so we're probably going to look at that. Um, so we're going to look at multiple you know, flavors and distributions and and even other hardware devices, but PFSense is one that you will see over and over and over again. It's very popular, has um, a huge following. And one of the uh, co-founders and lead developer developers of PFSense actually left PFSense and now works for Ubiquity. Just a little tidbit there. So, um... Now that our virtual box is open, let's go ahead and create the PFSense machine. So we're going to create a new VM and we'll call it PFSense. And we are going to select BSD. And we'll do FreeBSD 64 bit. By the way, if you think I didn't do that right, let me know. Anyway, we're going to go next, and we've got 8 gigs of RAM. Windows 10 is chewing up 54%, so about 4 gigs, but I am recording a video. Um, this is a VM. It's only going to have one machine behind it because we're going to learn the concepts, you know, things you can take, put them in a physical appliance or an ESXi server <clears throat> and scale it out. So I think we'll go ahead and leave it at a gig of RAM. And we're going to create a, a virtual hard drive now. We're going to leave it as a VDI. And we'll do it, uh, we'll make it so it's dynamically allocated. If we, we do that, it doesn't take the entire size that we specify for the hard drive and allocate it. It's kind of a flat file or an empty file that expands as, as needed. So that's what we're going to do. And... It recommended 16 gig, 8 gig, 
So we'll go ahead and create that. So the virtual machine has been created. So now we need to modify our network and then actually install the operating system. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click on settings with the PFSense virtual machine highlighted. You're going to go down to, um, let's do this first. Let's go to storage. And then you see this little CD icon right here. You're going to click on that and it's going to show us our optical drive. But what we're going to do is we're going to click this little CD icon over here. And we are going to choose virtual optical disk drive. And what we're going to do is we are going to select that file that we downloaded, which is the pfsense hyphen ce hyphen 2.3.2 dash release dash amd 64.iso then we're going to scroll down here to network and we're going to create an additional network adapter but first what we're going to do adapter number one is going to be bridged so what that's going to do is it's actually going to share the uh, this network adapter with the wired connection that is in this machine and if you've only got one wired connection that you're doing this with or one network connection then it should um, likely select select that bridged uh, adapter that you want to use right here you can see if I drop this down it's got my wireless LAN that's in this machine but this is the one that I want because it's the hardwired connection we're gonna leave everything uh, the way it is under advanced we're going to go over to adapter number two we're going to enable the adapter we are going to make it an internal network and the name on this guy is we'll call this the PF sense network and once again we'll leave everything default under advanced and we'll go ahead and click OK. So now we've set up our network adapters and we've mounted the ISO so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna uh, power this guy on so we'll right click on there um, and go to start or you can come up here and click start. And what's gonna happen is gonna load this virtual machine in just a second. Oh, that's cute. They've got a, a happy uh, New Year, Merry Christmas thing. Uh, so when this comes up, you'll see at the top of the window, it says you have the auto capture keyboard turned on. This will cause the virtual machine to automatically capture the keyboard. And we'll go ahead and close that. So to release control of this window, what we can do is down here where it says right control, that means you hit the right control uh, button on your keyboard if the, the keyboard and mouse is captured it will release that now um, what had what happened in the background PF sense that that disk that we had mounted went ahead and did an auto boot and we were probably going to let it do that anyway and if we don't do anything here you can see that the installer is going to be invoked so we're going to go ahead and let it do that so the first screen that we've got so recap that real quick if you started the machine just let it boot you'll end up at this screen you'll be okay the first thing we're gonna do is go down to accept these settings and we're gonna do a quick slash easy install so we'll hit enter on that it'll say easy install will automatically install without asking any questions that's fine it'll automatically partition the disk do everything we need to do go ahead and click OK and it's gonna go ahead and install now it's gonna say you may wish to install a custom kernel we're just gonna say standard kernel hit enter OK it says this machine is about to be shut down after the machine has reached its shutdown state you may remove the CD from the CD-ROM drive tray and press enter to reboot the hard drive it doesn't it's not differentiating between being in this virtual machine and a physical box at this point. So we'll go ahead and tell it to reboot. Default uh, username is admin and default password is pfsense. You need to remember to change that. Don't use vendor defaults.
the uh, installation. Yeah, so uh, we forgot to eject the virtual disk, so we're going to go ahead and shut this down real quick. Okay, so the shut the shutdown went through, so we'll right click on it, go to settings, go down here to storage, and um, we will remove the disk from the virtual drive. We'll click OK. Go ahead and start our virtual machine back up. And when it comes up, it should boot into our PFSense installation. There it goes. The default is F1, so this is going to go ahead and boot. And then um, auto boot will take over if we don't specify any other options. Okay, so we're booted up into our installation. And as you can see, the WAN interface right here is EM0, and it has grabbed an IP address from the physical network that it is sharing with this host machine. And so we want to change that because that needs to be 192.168.1.2, and then we will assign a LAN address. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to... Um, Go to number two for set interface IP address. And we want to select one, which is the WAN. And do we want to configure IP version four via DHCP? No. So we're going to enter the new IP address, 192.168.1.2. Then it's going to ask us for a subnet mask. And here we have to enter this as a bit count. So we need to enter 24 because we're gonna it's uh, a class C 24 and it says for a WAN enter the new WAN IP version 4 upstream gateway address so how is that WAN getting out to the internet so that's 192.168.1.1 do we want to configure IP version 6 on uh, WAN no and we are not going to specify an IP version 6 at this point, so we just hit enter. Do you want to revert to HTTP as the web configurator protocol? No. Okay, the new IP version 4 WAN address has been set to 192.168.1.2. That's fantastic. So now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set a LAN address so that way we can connect a virtual machine to it and start configuring PFSense. So the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to hit number two again and we are going to this time select number two for the LAN which is E. EM0 or EM1, sorry. And it says enter the new LAN IP version 4. So this is going to be an entirely new subnet that we are hiding behind this virtual machine, our PFSense installation. So we're going to make this 192.168.55.1. It wants to know the bits again. We'll go ahead and um, we're only going to have one machine behind this. We could do. 24 but if we do um, 29 that should make it even smaller do you know how many IP addresses that will give us we'll see if you can figure that part out and since this is a LAN press enter and we're not going to give it an IP version 6 address do we want to enable the DHCP server on the LAN and the answer to that is yes we do Enter the start address um, of the IP version 4 client address range. It's going to be 192.168.55.2 and the end range. So we're only going to have one machine here, right? So we will say 
55 maybe we'll have more machines we'll see we'll see how this shakes out 55 dot four um, do you want to revert to HTTP as the web configurator protocol no and so now you can see that our IP version 4 LAN address has been set to 192.168.55.1 slash 29 and it tells us we can now access the web configurator by opening the following URL in our web browser https colon slash slash 192.168.55.1 press enter to continue so we press enter it brings us back to the um, the console here and so now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and we're going to fire up this other virtual machine. So we'll um, go ahead and create this. We're not actually going to install uh, Ubuntu yet. We're just going to run it as a live CD real quick so we can get into this web configurator and uh, reset the password and all that good stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to release the mouse we're gonna minimize our PF sense and we're gonna do a new VM we're gonna call this Ubuntu desktop and it's funny that uh, Oracle knew that as soon as we typed Ubuntu did you see this it switched it to Linux and Ubuntu 64-bit it's uh, it's fantastic we're just gonna give this guy a gig of RAM um, we'll create a hard disk and it'll be a VDI dynamic 8 gigs but we are not going to install we're going to um, go to the settings on this machine we're going to go down here to uh, first thing we'll do is go to storage we'll click on our CD icon we'll come over here and we will select the Ubuntu 16.04.1 desktop dash amd 64.iso and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to network and adapter number one where it says enable network adapter attached to NAT no you're gonna select internal network and then that PF sense network we created you're gonna select that so now it's gonna connect to that PF sense network that 192.168.55 uh, dot zero slash 29 network it's gonna grab an IP address and uh, we should be able to get to the web configurator so we are gonna go ahead and we are gonna do a normal start we'll have to fix that but we uh, it came up welcome we're gonna I'm selecting English because I can't speak any of these other languages uh, and then I'm going to click uh, try Ubuntu and so this will not run through the installer at this point it's going to run it just as a, a live CD did you figure out what the subnet mask was for a CIDR slash 29 yet hmm we'll show you in a minute if uh, if you didn't come up with it So we go to https colon slash slash 192.168.55.1. It's going to come up, tell us our connection is not secure. We're going to click advanced, add exception, uncheck to permanently store this exception, confirm the security exception, and now we have a login to pfSense screen and if you remember the default username and password is admin and then pf sense and I never want to remember passwords so did you get that cider notation yet not yet okay so if we bring up click on this and we go to terminal there are other shortcuts to get to terminals so don't if you know those don't get all um, upset that I didn't use another shortcut I wanted to show people a nice easy way to search the machine to come up with terminal so we'll do an if config and there it is subnet mass 255.255.255.248 so how many usable IP addresses does that give us in that range well you can't 
typically use the first or the last in this. So just as a general rule here, or um, as a good rule, how many usable IPs do we have? So we can go to 254. Think about it. Think about it. Put the answer down in the down in the comments. So you can see that we grab that. Um, we can ping 192.168.55.1, which is our obviously we're logged into the web configurator. But then we can also ping 1.1, which is the USG. We should be able to ping 66.5, which is our cloud key. So we've got full connectivity. So we're into our interface. We used the default uh, admin PF sense, and it's going to walk us through this wizard. Um, so while PF sense is um, open source and while it is free, you can get paid subscriptions. I do not have a paid subscription for support. So, all right. So on this screen, this is where we're going to set general parameters. Host name, why break tradition, lab dash PF sense. That sounds good to me. Domain, we'll call this lab.howx5.com. Primary DNS server, we will set this as 192.168.66.10. And then this one we will set as Google. And then we can allow DNS servers to be overridden by DHCP on the WAN. Uh, time server host name, I usually use ntp.uiuc.edu. That's the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Champaign-Urbana. And then select your proper time zone. Configure the WAN interface. And let's see, um, we're not going to change any of these options. We already changed uh, the WAN address through the console, so we're going to leave all of this the same. We'll just leave that default. We're going to leave this LAN set up the same. Okay, admin password. So. On this screen, this is where you will set the admin password, which will be used to access this web GUI and also SSH if enabled. Do not use PFSense. That's a horrible idea. Choose a passphrase, something that you're not going to forget, but something that somebody is not easily going to guess. And we'll go ahead and hit reload. It says a reload is uh, in progress. Please wait. The wizard will redirect to the next step. Uh, congratulations, PFSense is now configured. Please consider contributing back to the project. Click here to continue on to the PFSense web configurator. Click here to purchase services. We're going to go ahead and click here to continue. You're going to see system information on this first page and this thing is uh, scaled down because of the resolution that I'm recording and only recording in 720 I may have to start scaling it out to full screen um, so the um, web configurator um, has actually scaled down to to fit the uh, the screen okay, weather.gov pops up so we will check out Peoria Illinois See what the weather is doing there. Uh, a balmy three degrees with a low of zero. Uh, responsive is the word that I was thinking of. Uh, so the the PF Sense uh, web GUI web GUI is responsive. So it would probably work really well from an iPad, which is fantastic. So we're good to go. We've laid all the groundwork for our future videos of PF Sense. Uh, I will probably either bump up the RAM in this Ubuntu desktop or maybe switch this out for like a DSL, a damn small Linux, or something like that. Um, you know, if you've got suggestions, um, you know, I might even uh, throw a, uh, you know, uh, who knows what I'm going to throw in there. Maybe I'll surprise you. But anyway, if you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. 
please comment and share, and we'll see you in the next video.